Wiley Wilmot here with the National Sports Media Association. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing David Teal of the Richmond Times Dispatch, 2023's Virginia Sports Writer of the Year. David, how are you? I'm well, Wiley. Thanks for uh, uh, having me. Oh, of course. Thanks for coming on. And we obviously have to start with the fact that this is your 15th time winning the award. I don't know if you're even surprised anymore when you hear the news, but has what winning this award means to you changed at all over the years? I think it, I, I think the older you, you get, and obviously <laughs> I am not a young man, the more you, you appreciate it because it's it's recognition by your peers and uh, that never gets old and it's it's humbling because I work around so many capable sports journalists in this state and around the country uh, so it's it's nice to, to to have that recognition yeah absolutely and so we've had you on for this series before um, the last time you won in 2021. So one of my fellow interns, Jack McKenney, you mentioned to him that your father would place the sports section of the newspaper underneath your pillow before he'd go to work, which that's hilarious, by the way. Um, but you've literally <laughs> been living, breathing um, sports for as long as you can remember. You started writing at the age of nine when your father encouraged you to write about all the sports you were watching. Um, here you are now as a 15-time winner you clearly haven't lost any passion for the job. Uh, why do you think that is? Because it beats working for a living. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 and it, it allows you, uh, as, as my friend Dave Fairbank, who's a, a, a former writer uh, colleague of mine, once said, it's terminal adolescence. <laughs> And there, there, there are no calluses on these hands. There's no manual labor involved. <laughs> But, but it is, it's, if, if you don't have that passion and joy for mm. sports, then I guess it would be a job, <laughs> but it, and, and it, and it, look, it, it is at times <clears throat> and the hours can be long and crazy and erratic, but still the, the, the privilege of telling stories of athletes uh, of all shapes, sizes, ages, genders, backgrounds. And it's, it, it is a privilege to do and is, it can be so inspiring to do because so many Absolutely. of these people have accomplished so much in the face of oftentimes great adversity. Mm. No, that, that's a great way to put it. And I guess going off of that, I mean, every season, every player, every sport is different. Um, and so it's constantly changing. And has the way you've approached the job changed at all over the years? Oh, my gosh. It, it, if if you haven't changed over the years, <laughs> Wiley, you've perished. What are you doing? <laughs> to, 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 trust me. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, if you'd have asked me, oh, social media, oh, social media, you know, right. all these innovations, uh, you, you have to adapt. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the challenge. And in large measure, it can be part of the fun as mm -hmm. well. You know, social media allows you to have greater interaction with your audience. Now, sometimes that's a good thing. There are, often, there are other times and maybe that's not so good, d d depending on how uh, patient or tolerant uh, the audience member is of uh, your views and, and your uh, product. But yeah. no, the, the, the job has changed. It has become, I think, more, more difficult, more draining at, at times because you know, it used to be you wrote your story and you were done. Right. But now th there are no deadlines and the internet beast must be fed at all times. And so content, content, content. And y you have to be careful mm. that you keep that. And I believe me, I'm still learning. There are times when I've, I fail miserably at this 
with your work, life, home, family balance. You, you just, mm. you, you need to be very protective of that because if you're not, the job will envelop you. Right. That makes sense. I was going to say sometimes, I mean, you're still on the writing side of the whole sports media operation. And sometimes these days it feels like writing is the lost art, but you're still having to keep up with the demands that social media and the constant access to um, information puts on like writing and the amount that you're having to put out there. So absolutely. Well, Full, full disclosure, mm. the reason I was late for our Zoom today <laughs> is because I was finishing up recording a podcast. Oh, with, no with, way. Yeah, with, with, with my coworker. So there's your perfect example. Of, <laughs> you know, the, the, the alternative uh, types of content that we produce now as opposed to 15, 20 years ago. Right. Absolutely. And I know the last couple questions I've asked you have been pretty like spanning your entire career, um, but just zeroing in on 2023, the year you won this award for, was was there a particular story that was you know meaningful or memorable to you either through the process of writing it or um, just what it meant to put it out there and have the reception that it did? Um, well, you know, a, a couple different storylines unfolded during the, the 2023 uh, calendar year. I cover a lot of ACC. You, know, right. you, you attend a, an ACC school, you're an ACC athlete, and ACC expansion mm. and you know, conference realignment. That was a big topic. All of a sudden, the ACC is yeah. now on the, in the Pacific <laughs> time zone. I know. With, How do you feel about the All Coast Conference nickname? Yes, it, it, exactly. <laughs> with, with with Cal and Stanford, in, in addition to SMU in, in, in the Dallas market, you know, for for those of us of a certain vintage, the ACC used to be this compact little eighteen mom and pop operation that existed solely in Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Mm. Uh, not so wow. much anymore. And uh, so, you know, that was among the storylines. And, you know, right there at, at Virginia, back in, in January of <clears throat> 2023, you folks lost an icon in the former basket, men's basketball coach, Terry Holland. Mm. And I was privileged to cover Terry throughout most of his tenure as oh, wow. head basketball coach and uh, to, to, to write about how he battled so gracefully the scourge that is Alzheimer's disease and how life had come full circle. It was so remarkable that his primary care physician in his latter days was Dr. Bobby Stokes who was a point guard for him oh, wow. in the early days at Virginia and how he as a coach had encouraged Bobby to stay on that pre-med academic track during his basketball time and then to have it all come back wow. at the very end of his life and to have this gentleman care for him was, was such a poignant tale. Yeah, that that is so touching, especially because – I mean, for most athletes, you're not going pro. That's not the end all be all. And so for coaches to have like the kind of impact that they do on your development as a person, not just a player, that's really incredible. Actually, my mom grew up in Charlottesville and Ann Holland was her Latin teacher. Um, oh, it's so that? She, yeah, she always there like the way she speaks about the Hollands. They're just legends and had such a great impact on everyone they met. So absolutely. No question. Anne is, is, Anne is, is great, great. Is great people. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and so, yeah, I was I was going to also get into Virginia. So you went to JMU and now you've been writing for the Times Dispatch in Richmond for some time. What's it like covering sports in Virginia? I know we've talked about now how the ACC is expanding and it's going to be a nationwide affair at this point. But specifically for the Commonwealth, what is it like covering sports here? It's been it's been great. I spent 
most of my career with the daily press in, in Newport News, and then I've been with the Times Dispatch for the last four plus years. Uh, but you know, the, the state of Virginia is not unique, but it's it's different in that we are not a pro sports state. Now we we delve into the DC pro market mm -hmm. a little bit, but Virginia in large measure is about high school and intercollegiate athletics. And you think about the athletes that this state has produced on on the that have gone on to, to national fame and and fortune. My, my you know, I Alan Iverson and Michael Vick and Alonzo Mourning, I mean, Hall of Fame type athletes. Mia Hamm grew up in Virginia before going on mm. to Chapel Hill and, you know, being this women's soccer icon right. and just, just so many amazing athletes and coaches who have, you know, come through here and George Welsh and Frank Beamer, who built the, the football programs at UVA and Virginia Tech, respectively, and, you know, took them from, you know, losing programs to national recognition. Uh, it's just, it's been so much fun to be a part of for upwards of four decades now. Wow, that's incredible. No, I agree. It makes me never want to leave the state. Um, we <laughs> love to end this off with asking for advice for, People like winners like yourself, advice you would give to someone in my position. I know you've gotten this question before. So specifically for, say, a college senior about to graduate or someone who is early on in their career in sports journalism, what advice would you give for them to be successful and have a long career in the business? Well, number one, you have to be versatile in your skill set. And that's why I think it's so important in your educational pursuits to diversify as, as much as, as you can. I know you have to focus on your major and perhaps the concentration in your major, but to delve into the liberal arts or the sciences, I, I so often find myself thinking, I wish I had more of a law background because so much of sports now has gotten into to the courts and yeah. you know athlete compensation and college athletes should they be employees i mean those are are the legal and ethical and moral issues of the day right. and i wish i'd take I, I took one business law class at jmu i wish i'd taken a heck of a <laughs> lot more and had some you know some retention of of that knowledge so so that would be part of it and then to be curious and, and flexible in, in your career aspirations, and then to just <clears throat> consume others' content and find out what mm -hmm. you like. You know, read other writers, watch other, watch and listen to other podcasts, you know, videos, YouTubers, whatever it is, whatever uh, genre you aspire to, to be in, you know, immerse yourself in that and and find what you think is good don't copy it you you, you develop your own style right but th that's the way to learn oh exactly thank you so much for the advice and for being with here being with me here today especially in the middle of march madness season i really appreciate you taking the time wiley it's my pleasure thanks so much for having me absolutely have a good day you too thank you